Hey lovelies, you're welcome back to Reviews and Recaps. We're going to do a recap of Put a Ring on It, episode two. So before we get into it, please subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you tap that bell for notifications. I do commentary on all things reality TV show and everything in between. Let's get into it. So the episode started with the ladies talking about their dates. Dr. Nicole was trying to find out how did the date go, ETC. So Joa started talking about her date and how it was good because she's more reserved she's more calm and then the date was over the top so there was like a balance of energies um and then she talks about the fact that they had discussed boundaries but that jay didn't set any boundaries for them for them so she told him when she gave got back from the date about the fact that she took a napkin and helped the guy remove the crumb off his face and wondered whether or not that was crossing any lines. Of course, Dr. Nicole starts asking him, how did he feel about that? He was like, initially when she talked about it, he really didn't like that. I like that he was honest about it. So he's like, you know, it was like a test of the ego. The ego was really trying to get in there, but then he's like, oh, it's cool. And then you just see her there just smiling at him in the confessional. She looks like, I'm proud of my man. Well, I hope you keep that same energy when he does the same thing. So then Dr. Nicole faces Catherine. How was your day? Catherine was like, yeah, he brought me red roses. And then she's like, how did you feel about it talking to her man? And he was like, oh, that's a good move. I'm like, bro, Ricky, that hair on your head gets to go. But that's just me. So then Catherine is like, you put the red roses next to his bed, his side of the bed to remind him that when was the last time he bought her some roses? I'm like, ouch. So Catherine starts talking about, you know, she really enjoyed the date. He listens and he was funny and all of that. And so Dr. Nicole is like, is that different from what you experienced with Ricky? And then she's like, yeah, most times she feels like Ricky listens to respond. I'm like, Ricky, bro, if you don't step up, Catherine will get to step in. Do you hear me? So then Dr. Nicole was like, okay, now it's time to decide who gets the second date. So Joe has said no, um, because the date wasn't really trying to get to know her. He was just too busy trying to woo her. I'm like, yeah, he was a bit over the top in my opinion. So I get that. Chan said no. I'm not surprised because her man sonned Phil. So no, he ain't going to be getting another date. That's for sure. So then the doctor was like, how do you feel about that Dumber? And then Dumber was like, "I she did exactly what I expected. She doesn't need a little boy. She needs a man. So basically get her a man man. Like, I'm like, bro, all right, all right, all right, all right. So he's like, bring a proper competition. I'm like, okay, enough said. I'm sure they will rise to that challenge, honey. He's going to sun you soon. This is the thing that got me about Dumber in his confessional. He said, I'm a successful black man without felonies. There's not a lot of us out here. I'm like, bro, what the hell? There are a lot of people, a lot of black successful people with no felonies, honey. Let, let, let's let's get that together. Let's get that straight. Where are you from, Dumber? Where is all this energy coming from? So then the one that really surprised me was Catherine. Catherine said no to Mark. Apparently, she felt like she's going to be inheriting the same similarities with Ricky. He already has one kid. He's been divorced and she doesn't want to go down that route again. And I'm like, OK, that's fair enough. So then the doctor starts telling them. It's the guy's turn to go on dates, blah, blah, blah. And the girls are like, they ain't ready. I'm like, well, you did your dates and you had fun last week. So don't forget that. Guys, do you know what got me? When Jaysha was out here trying to work out, trying to pump those arms for his workout. Like what? I love how Joa is so cool about it though. So then she's like, are you serious? And then he's like, oh, I used to do that with you. Then this guy starts burning sage. I'm like, guy, that's witchcraft, I beg. But why are you burning sage anyway? Anyways, the date knocked on the door and she is a baddie. I saw that buddy. I was like, that buddy on Celine? Oh my gosh. Like, girl, you sure about that no boundaries thing? Like, that girl looks like a baddie. Did you see the way Jaysha was looking at her? He was like, ooh, what? So then in his confessionals, is like, my first impression is like, you know, she, she's beautiful, you know, beautiful brown skin. I'm like, yeah, she is gorgeous. What? Do you hear me? That color on her skin is, a oh, it is hot. Anyways, I, I'm going to stop drooling now. As soon as they left, did you see Joa drink that wine? She downed it. 
like girl it must be rough but you guys know when you sign up for this ish that it's a madness still like i don't know why anyone would sign up for this process over on the other side ricky was going on a date with this girl who wore this black short ass dress i'm like all right girl she was there to slay honey so his date is a nurse she has like some caribbean twang to her i'm like okay this could be interesting what was interesting is the fact that ricky lives with his family and Catherine so his family would be interjecting in like conversations and things like that that would rub me off the wrong way I can't even that would rub me the wrong way like seriously I would not like that at all and it's interesting that she said like it would be nice for her and Ricky to live by themselves and I think it's probably good for like a relationship you don't want all that extra noise in the background in my opinion but anyway well, you know, it's not my relationship. It's theirs, right? So anyway, so Catherine is like interrogating the girl, being like, so do you guys know where you're going? And then she's like, yeah, you know, something with a little Caribbean to it. You know, that's where I'm from. I'm like, okay, girl. Catherine does not care. She's like, where are you taking my man? So then she's like, take care of my baby. And then she kisses Ricky. And then you would see Ricky's sister and brother in the background laughing their asses off. Like they actually made this scene for me. Like it was hilarious. If you didn't see, go back and watch it. So after Ricky left, Ricky actually opened the door for her. I'm like, okay, Ricky, look at you trying to be romantic now. Like, all righty. So back over at the house, Catherine was basically talking to Ricky's brother and sister. And they were like... And so she's like oh she looked like they were going to the club and then they were like yeah she came ready so then Catherine is like we know she caribbean so don't be dropping no spices on my man i'm like girl you know that girl came prepared in that dress i'm not gonna lie what so jay shows on his little little day mm, a big big day because the energy is like the sparks are flying or whatnot so they start talking about chakras and all that um Met metaphysical stuff that i don't know nothing about and i don't subscribe to but anyways i guess they both do so they connected on that um and also it also sounds like she travels a lot and you know Joshua is all about the travels honey he was like oh yeah and then so she's like she tends to go to like spanish speaking countries she speaks a little bit of spanish just to get by and like, it's interesting because I'm learning Spanish as well. So the way she was saying, I'm like, yes, girl, I feel you. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm not even at your level yet, but I could understand a bit of what she said. So it was like, okay, at least they connected on that and the travels as well. I do see him saying he wants another date with this woman though, still, because she's a baddie. So it looks like they ordered well though, because I was looking at the food. I'm like, can I get a bite? Because like, what? The food looks good. So anyways, they were talking about like the kid thing the marriage thing she's like well if she doesn't get married she's not having kids and that you know she knows a lot of people that really want kids but she's never really been like that it's sort of like if she gets married then of course she'll have kids but if not then no kids he looked surprised and happy because he's like she ain't gonna give me no pressure i can date her for another 10 years all of that he seemed very excited about the fact that she don't want no kids right now over on the other side with chance and dumba chance was basically telling dumba that she's very anxious at the moment and like you know he might go out and find love and she's like worried about that and whatnot so he's like he's just trying to go and learn things so that he can be a better man to his woman chance and she's like you're wearing my favorite color no you're not supposed to do that you're meant to do that when i'm there i'm like oh girl so now you want to act like him so then she says to dumba she doesn't know how she's going to be able to act when the girl knocks on the door i'm like oh my god you guys are the same aren't you so dumba asked chance like do i have a car for you blah 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 she's like well if you don't come by the time the streets lights are out then i'm gonna have to be throwing out your things and you're going to have to sleep somewhere else tonight so she said directly if you miss your curfew dunbar you are sleeping outside with the pigeons her energy was very much given mommy energy so he gives daddy energy and she gives mommy energy very very interesting girl the part that got me was like you better not betray me because i will cut you i'm like what 
girl that is some negative energy i'm not here for it at all chance i did not expect that from you so then crystal walks up to the door chance hugged her chance asked us to come in i'm like okay what's gonna happen so then aunt decided to ask crystal to do a spin i'm like okay interesting then she's like so what are you looking for in a man so then Crystal is like, you know, someone that is confident, someone that is loving, caring. And then Chance decided to sit on Domba's lap like, yeah, I'm listening. So then she's like, you have the opportunity to go on a date with an amazing man. Don't cross no boundaries, no touching. I'm like, wow. So you guys are exactly the same. It's like you're trying to sun a crystal now. Interesting. So then she's like, don't look at him below the chest. Like, keep it all the way up so Dumba is like oh let me walk you ladies out so then chance is like should i put my shoes on so i can walk you guys i'm like girl no do you know what? on their day it was pure banter i enjoyed watching crystal and Dumba. i think she's very like she's very laid-back energy smiley receptive reciprocative very feminine like he likes it of course it was thrown off when she was like she does not cook and she's just learning how to cook he's like oh so if i come back after he's like girl secure the food what do you mean you don't cook but aside that they seem to have been getting along really well so then it looks like they were laughing a lot and whatnot and then so done by then asked her what are the key qualities that you like in a man so she's like confidence charismatic kind and then she talks about Christ has to be the center. I'm like, oh, he liked that. So then she's like, you know, I understand that I'm going to have to be submissive to you. And he's like, say that again. He loved, like he was taking all of that in, honey. He liked it. So she's there smiling. She's like, I know that's my role and I'm happy to do it it like do you hear me did you see the joy on Dumber's face he loved it so Dumba asked a really good question what does submissive mean to you and i think it's a very good question to ask when someone says either that they want a submissive partner or that you want to be submissive i think it's a good question to ask because it means different things to different people so i loved how he asked her that and so she's like, you know, I want the man to lead. And I'm like, I am not mad at it at all. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, you know, a little, a little digression. I want a man to lead. Um, my husband, I need him to lead. Um, I don't want to have to lead. Like I've worked in industries that that are male dominated industries where I've had to lead industries where I've had to lead with my masculine energy. I don't want to do that, which is one of the reasons why I feel like uh, he has to be a man's man, because when he's a man's man, that also helps me to be a lot more submissive. But yeah, that's just my own little two cents. So then Dunbar starts talking about his ministry and the kind of woman that he wants. He wants a woman who is grounded, who can help him in the things that he's doing. And then, so Dunbar then asked her like, what's her future in ministry? And she He's like, I do preach. I'm like, girl, if this ain't a connection, I don't know what is. Like, Chance, girl, I'm scared for you, honey, because your man is loving all things about this girl, Crystal. She's like, I am a minister. I do lead a youth group. Like, he was impressed. He loved it. I feel like they're very on the, on the face of it. We don't know what personalities um, would look like, but at the, looking like this it looks like they have a connection guys did you hear what Dumber said about this woman in confessionals it was like she was wholesome she was beautiful i loved her spirit i loved her soul i'm like wow like he really was touched through meeting her i pray that everyone that meets me feels that way about me because there's something about like even if you don't feel like we're a connection just feeling like i'm that impactful that i have such a good soul and spirit like i think that's just beautiful so over on the other side with ricky and shayla it sounded like they were just like bantering like friends i don't really see a connection there um so shayla starts asking him what do you like to do he's like he likes sports he's very competitive and then she's like oh she's very competitive as well what was also interesting was the fact that ricky said in his confessionals that he's using the date so he can like get a woman's perspective on some of the issues that he's having with Catherine so his goal for the dates was very clear it ain't to get to know nobody it's like guy 
give me some info, give me some help so I can go there and, and, you know, have some good time with my lady. So then Ricky brought up the fact that he has an ex-wife and she goes out, she has shows and stuff, and sometimes he has to watch the kid at night, so the kids at night. So he would be in the house um, on the couch, sleeping on the couch, watching the children overnight, um, but nothing happens with his ex-wife. But that Catherine does not like that. And so the date was like, well, to be honest, if there is communication, like if I know what you guys are doing, if the woman is also respectful towards me, then I have no issue. And I agree with that. Like, I wouldn't have an issue with that. At the end of the day, that's your kid. Um, and there's some points where I would also want to be there. Probably, why not? Let me also help watch your kid, right? Or you guys' kids. Absolutely, right? But at the very minimum, I would want to have a decent enough relationship with the baby's mother. So there is mutual respect. It's not like she's being disrespectful. And I have no... There's nothing to suggest that she wants to get back with you, basically. Said, you know how Ricky went in thinking is just about to go there and ask for help. He ended up having so much fun. He ended up enjoying his time. And I'm like, bruh, he definitely had a good time. But I get the impression Ricky is a little scared of Catherine. Hmm. I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. So moving on from that, Dumba and Chance and Dr. Stacy were having their one on one. So Dr. Stacy walks in and she's like, you know, she intentionally chose them as the first couple because with them, she's confused. I'm like, ooh. She's like, you initially said you want someone submissive. And then she's like, but I take care of you. And so Dr. Stacey's like, she was like initially trying to figure out like, where can she help Chance and Dumba basically in terms of their relationship. So then Dumba is like, okay, let me start. Um, So I feel like most times when she wants to do something, she tends to ask her father first before asking me. And then guess who responds? Chance butts in and she's like that's not true i'm like girl let him finish at least so he's like several situations right so he's like oh when she's investing when she's launching a book when she's doing anything basically anything of significance she basically depends on her father's advice before she listens to him it's almost like speaking to him is like a second opinion then chance's response got me she's like oh are you pulling stuff out of a hat I just feel like sometimes you just pull stuff out of the hat. Like that is disrespectful. Even if you don't agree with that, that's not the way to go about it. Like that, this is why he is not feeling you right now, sis. This is why he's like, he needs you to be submissive because the way you're coming, that energy is too masculine. Dumba then basically explains that he doesn't know how to handle a strong, independent woman who like, questions his judgment who he feels like does not need him he feels like sometimes when he's like asking her can i help you with this she's like no i got it and he doesn't like not feeling like he's needed so one thing i did like was that dr stacy was like do you know what let's have a one-on-one -on -one. so she ended up having a one-on-one -on -one with dumba and so dr stacy starts telling him that she sees a fear there and she wants to know like what's going on and then he started tearing up he's like he's never told anyone this before um and so that was the end of the episode so we'll have to wait until next week to find out do you know what i'm actually glad to see a vulnerable side of dumba um i know initially when we first saw him we we're like oh who is this crazy person but it's nice to sort of see that there is something there and i hope that dr stacy is going to be able to help him work through that but yeah, I like I really like I really like the season. Like, is it just me? Like, let me know in the comment section below. Are you feeling this new season the way I'm feeling the new season? I don't know if it's the doctor, I don't know if it's the straight shooting from the doctor. I don't know if it's just because it seems like they really want to help the couples this season and it's not about the drama. I don't know. But whatever it is, I am loving it. And that's the end of today's episode. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And please subscribe, please subscribe. I'm begging for subscribers, trying to hit that 1000 mark. I know I still have a long way to go, but I know you guys are here for me. So please subscribe and tap that bell for notifications so you know every single time that I post. Also, let me know in the comment section below, what did you think about this episode? Yeah, speak to you later. Bye.